Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of this series, Expats in Azores, and I'm here at a beautiful location. I'm not going to tell you yet, you have to pay attention. By the way, do you like my little mic stick? It's different, have you noticed it's different in every location? But this is a this is actually a great piece of equipment, it's actually, uh, you know, it symbolizes the location and the beauty of this place. So anyway, I got a great guest here for you guys. Um, Remy, uh, I met actually through our startup group here on the island, and uh, man, when when I heard what she was doing, I said, "You have to come on the show, our episode series here, and uh, tell your story and how you got here." So, Remy, thanks so much for taking the time. Wow! So welcome. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here, and uh, yeah. thank you. You're awesome. So, tell us uh, first what we like to start off with is how did you hear about the Azores? Like, how did because like not many people know about this place. So how did you hear about it? Well, so I actually was introduced to the Azores through Juan, my now husband. I remember we met uh, we met online, and I just saw his name J O A O. And being American and not seeing that name very much, you know, where I was in at least, I was like Yo Wei like who is this? But he has a cute picture. <laughs> and we we met and we uh, started dating, and then um, he was actually the one that suggested we got engaged, and I wow. wanted to do um, a destination wedding, and he suggested San Miguel. Oh, wait, hold on a second, because you said you met online, and right now there's an app <laughs> called Bumble that's getting a lot of press. Really? Yeah, it's like huge. It's like where women choose the guy first. So you want to share where you guys met? <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> it was an app that I don't think exists anymore. I think it was bought by one of the bigger ones, but it was called How About We? Okay. And so you suggest a date, so it's like How About We You know, oh. go to, I think I was in Boston, so a lot of them were like go to a Red Sox game, or oh, you know, nice. How About We? My How About We said How About We go to a yoga class. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and Joao was your first date? Well, we was actually it? didn't do any of our suggested dates. We oh. went to a normal dinner, but it does get, it gives you a sense of the person based on the date that they suggest. Mm. And so, and his was, how about we go to the Taza Chocolate Factory, which is a really oh. cool place in in, uh, in Somerville, actually. So. Nice, <laughs> nice. So, so you met in Boston, mm -hmm. um, and how did you? So he was already there in that area. How did you get there as well? How did you get? Fired? How did I get to Boston? Yeah. Um, so I was in Boston. Let's see. Since 2006, I moved actually for my company. I was in New York City working okay. with AIG Environmental back in my old life of uh, environmental insurance, yeah. and they gave me a great opportunity to move to Boston for a managerial position. And okay. so I was, you know, 26, single, and okay. it was like, great, why not move to a new city? Right, and, right. And it was in Boston. I was there a few years, and then just yeah, met Joao through through that app. Right. Okay. Great. So, and Joao is Portuguese. Yeah, Azorian. For, for those who don't know, Azorian. Where was Joao from? Like, what part of the So, Joao is from Santo Antonio. They say okay. Santo Antonio, além de Capelas, so yeah. not the one in Nordeste, but the one yeah. uh, near Capelas. Okay. And he was in Fall River for many years. He moved to America when he was 17. Um, basically, his family, his dad had, had passed. Oh, yeah. Minnie. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Minnie. You're definitely going to get a snuggle from yeah. Minnie while we're on this. Okay. <laughs> she wanted to make an appearance. Yeah. <laughs> but his family, his dad had passed. And so, his mom moved to the U.S., uh, moved to the United States to work, and he dropped out of high school here and went to work in one of the factories at 17, and then, you know, ended up going to, to school for journalism and got a master's and mm. really, like, adopted the, you know, the American immigrant, you know, culture, yeah. and he wrote about it, actually wrote a book about it, and, yeah. um, but anyway, so we, then he was in New Bedford. Is the and book then, online? Is it? You know, we have a copy here. I don't know okay. if it's online. We can okay. ask him. But, okay. Yeah, we say, can if it's online, it. we yeah. can put a link in the description. Yeah, yeah. He, he actually was nominated for a Pulitzer for it, so he's oh, wow. so humble about it. He told me this like last year. I'm like, how did I not know this about you? Right. <laughs> but yeah, so he he introduced me to the Azores through uh, watching the Anthony Bourdain. Um, I don't remember the name of the show, No Limits or, or something I like that. No Limits, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the show about yeah. the food because yeah. you know we, we both fell in love over food. That was a big thing, and right. actually he says that one of the reasons he he really liked me on our just on our second date is we went and we ate bacalhau, uh -huh. and he thought that it was amazing. Which <laughs> I know the it. jokes, I know the jokes that that's, not, <laughs> but that we actually ate bacalhau, and he was impressed because most people don't like the strong flavors right. of bacalhau. That was that, it. that was it for him. Once he had her on the hooked on the bacalhau, he's like, this is the one. <laughs> This is the one, Ma. <laughs> That's great. That was good, yeah. <laughs> that was great. That's great. Wow. So how did you guys, um, so obviously, so you met in the U.S., and then was it like, oh, I want to see where you're from, let's go to the island, like how did that happen? Yeah, well, well it started when um, when we were talking about the wedding, because, um, right. you know, he proposed, and then I said, I really want a destination wedding, because I... 
I always get stressed out when I'm bringing all of my worlds together, like my work friends and my personal friends and my family friends. And the idea of having like however many people in one room together, I was like, oh my gosh, let's do a destination wedding because then the people who really want to go will actually will actually come yeah. and we'll get to spend more than just one night with them. And right. so he said, let's do San Miguel Azores. And I was like, where? You know, I knew that yeah. I knew that he was from there, but, yeah. but I thought, okay. And so we came in 2012 for oh. a... Um, one week long kind of just vacation and mm. we were looking for wedding venues during that and it was like having a private tour guide you know Joao had yeah. maintained a connection coming here every year since he left right. um, and it was I was blown away I couldn't believe the the culture the the richness of the culture the mm. food oh, yeah. the and the nature I that's was just true. absolutely blown away and that's what started the idea of you know let's buy a house here so that right. was the first thing because yeah. my, my aunt had died okay. um, recently and that I had this uh, inheritance from her this life insurance policy basically okay. and and that the, the idea was well let's use that money to buy a house here right right uh, and then that turned into well maybe well, we should do was, more yeah what I was gonna say was that this house was that this place that's this place. oh my goodness because this is not no average house so tell us <laughs> how did you find this place because it's absolutely beautiful and how did you find this place how did that all happen mm, well thank you I'm glad that, um, that you enjoy it here it's nice giving you that little tour yeah, yeah. And perfect day yeah definitely <laughs> I thought it was gonna be all rainy or cloudy <laughs> but you know sun is here so yeah so um well so we had it was funny, we decided that we wanted to start this business, and so while we were planning the wedding, as if that weren't enough, we decided to start looking... I know, uh, that's looking. so true. Oh my gosh. Go-getters. <laughs> Go-getters. Go-getter alert. <laughs> So, so we we um, we knew that we needed our whole idea rested on having a property to actually start yeah. the the business was always around combining experiences with a place mm. to stay and yeah. we were inspired by uh, the Airbnb model from the early days back you know we were one of the first users actually we started using Airbnb back in 2010 I think wow. it was when we first and then AMC Appalachian Mountain Club and so okay. we wanted to be able to provide people a place to stay but then also show them you know through the locals perspective what mm. it's like and so so, so we were looking for properties, you know, and back in the day, this was 2012, 2013, nothing was online. There were no online yeah. listings. You yeah. needed to talk to people. And yeah. so having Joao and his connections here was, was really amazing. And every time we would come for a visit, we would also look for properties. Even our wedding, on our actual wedding, you know, trip, we were looking at properties. Oh and my <laughs> goodness, yeah. <laughs> and that was actually really overwhelming, I have to say. That wasn't I the know, best plan. But you're probably, ex there's a lot of excitement too it going was, on. Yeah. You know, it's exciting times, you know, all wrapped up together, so. Yeah. But wow. Yeah. So you found this place um, and. Well, so then I should tell you how we found this place. Yeah, so yeah. we actually, we had put an offer on another property okay. and it was the way we found it it was like you know we were walking down the street and Joao ran into somebody who's like a a tia of somebody you very know. common here very <laughs> common yeah and then oh <laughs> blah 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 we're thinking about moving here oh you know like my brother has this property you should yeah, take yeah. a look at so bada bing bada boom we like yeah. saw this beautiful property and we made an offer this is how this thing's happened and that one actually fell through the guy suddenly was like complicated you know yeah. whatever and so then we got interested in another property we mm. went really far down the line on that one we we did a topo plan, we did a license, we did all these plans because we had signed a purchase and sale yeah. and long story short, it just fell apart. It was yeah. uh, really disappointing and and I think a test for us and for me to decide did I really want to do this because oh. it was, um, we effectively had to start over from scratch, you mm. know, and when that, because we had spent six months on that property. We had put wow. it on our website, we had put photos of, of it on our website, we had wow. announced on our blog at the time that, hey, we found it, we're starting. Yeah. Um, and the whole thing unraveled oh, and it wow. was really disappointing, but it was amazing. That drama led to a lot of new followers of our story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what drama does, right? <laughs> so then, um, so That's then basically we doubled down and we were like, what, why, why did we think that it was possible to find a property in San Miguel Azores from Boston? Basically mm. we were, we were, oh wait, you found We it. were in Boston. Wow. Wow. So we had come, we had come for the wedding and Joao had made a trip, uh, to do, he did all the wedding planning. He found the DJ and everything. And on that trip, he was looking at prop. Yeah, Ladies. amazing. <laughs> what, was that, what was that app again? What was that app again? 
<laughs> Although I was pretty laid back. I didn't have very specific uh, things. I was pretty, I, I think I was pretty laid back. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> I love to That's ask good. him. Yeah. But anyway, so we were doing this from Boston and finally we realized we need to put uh, our, you know, we need to really sink into this. Let's go for six months and yeah. let's just have this plan where in six months, if we don't find a property, then, you know, we'll reevaluate, but let's go, let's, let's see what it's like to live there. You know, mm. I, for me, it would be living in a new country and really yeah. I was starting to learn the language, but it's a whole new culture. Right, right. Uh, we were going to be living with my mother-in-law, which is, you know, a whole nother thing. And <laughs> we'll, we'll delete that from the, from the video. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so yeah, it was when, it was when we decided to put the six month plan into place that yes. we got a call from our real estate agent who said, look, we found the property for you. Okay. And we were like, really? What? You know, cause you hear that and you're like, okay, yeah. sure. Like some, but you know, so send me some photos and I had built a model because we looked at like 30 something properties. And so I'd built a model to like object objectively evaluate based on our criteria right. you know and plus i'm a super nerd and i was gonna say like, the model like <laughs> she's building models over here <laughs> that's great though so then um i ran it through the model yeah. we looked at the pictures and we were like oh my god and it was coming out of um foreclosure basically okay. the guy who owned it before had uh, mortgaged it for a restaurant that didn't go you know didn't go well and they were losing it so the mm. deal the amount that we were to pay was a real deal and it was a huge opportunity and and then I had a dream that my aunt, who who had passed, whose money we were mm. using, um, I just had a just she she I don't know how to explain it, but I got mm. a sign. I had yeah, a sign from yeah. her, and literally the amount that we paid was exactly what was in the account of her wow. of what she had left. It was exactly wow. that, and it was just it felt like really right. But then this time I didn't tell anyone. This time we mm. we just I'm like let me keep my mouth shut. This time I'm not going to announce it. Yeah. And we came, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So we literally arrived, we took a one-way flight, and we landed on February 14th, which is just a few days from now, yeah. in 2015. Wow. So, yeah. Six-year anniversary. And so, yep. Yeah. And, and two days later, we had the keys in the hand. We signed on wow. it. We closed. Wow. Two days later? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, well, we'd put all the plans in place right, ahead right, of time. Right. Yeah. I mean, but this was literally, a, what, 2015, so it was a three-year process right. from when we started to when we actually closed. That's a long time. Um, so we had a lot of time to plan our business. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. Wow. So that when you, so after you closed, you basically were here, you moved. Yeah. That's so we it. moved. Yeah. Cause we were coming, we thought for the six months, that's mm. the plan that we had put into place. And, mm. and we left in historic Boston snowfall. It was like the year where the national guard had to dig out Boston. Wow, was, it was yeah. like, we barely got out. I couldn't believe it. We got out of that crazy snow mess. Yeah. And, yeah. and then that six month plan turned into a, basically forever plan almost yeah. immediately wow um, wow and so when you got here was i mean was it did it look as good as it did, does now <laughs> i mean like i mean was it in shambles i mean what, what happened at i'll that send point? you i'll just send you some pictures so yeah. it was it was a jungle it was it had been abandoned for two years oh, wow. and you know what it's like here yeah. in just a few months oh you yeah know? it's so green and yeah it's grown, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable and yeah. so um, the house was here, the structure was here, okay. but everything else, we needed to reconnect water, electric. Mm. We need, we also found that because the person who had owned it had gone through foreclosure, they had let a lot of things go that mm. normally you wouldn't in a home maintenance. And so yeah. a lot of things were, were, were shoddy, um, yeah. band-aids on bigger problems. Right, and so, right. um, it was, a, it was a big project to renovate this. Yeah. Um, wow. but it was, uh, a labor of love. I like to say blood, sweat, and tears and sure. a lot of love, yeah, blood, yeah. sweat, and tears and a lot of love. And yeah, I, I, we pulled out like, uh, sticker bushes by hand for like weeks, you know, with yeah. like, I had like four pairs of gloves and oh, still... It was a, it was an amazing time. It was wow. really humbling, and uh, I had my doubts sometimes during that. That was 2015 to 2017. Right, right. And yeah. so you've been open here now for three years. Yeah. Three years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's a great story, by the way. I mean, how you came here. I want to talk a little bit about like your experience here on the island as. You know, as a foreigner, okay. Well, now yeah. you're now you're a citizen, right? Or I'm, in the, in, the I'm in the yeah. process. I'm in the process. It's yeah. who knows. They said it could take one to three years and right. wait for a letter in the mail. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. I'm going through a similar process, yeah. but everything's a process. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us about your personal experience about you know, like the food, the culture, um, weather. Like, what's been your favorite parts and what's been mm. your not so favorite parts so far oh, about wow. the Azores? Well, I found. Probably immediately what really stood out was the the honesty and the integrity of the people. That mm. was something that really stood out to me. Like, for example, uh, when we first moved here, 
you know, we didn't have anything. We were staying in this annex at my mother-in-law's place. And so we bought um, all this furniture. And mm. I remember they just, they would deliver it. And they not only delivered it, they put it together for us. Mm. And we never even paid for it. It was, the, mm. that was the strange thing. So I was like, we haven't paid for this yet. Like, when are we going to pay for this? And I think part of it was because Joao has, is from here. And because yeah. he's had all these connections all these years. And just the, the, the trust between people that that I think happens when you live in a small community and yeah. when there is this knowledge. And I know that's changed, at least I've heard recently. Um, but it, that stood out to me as like, wow, in the U.S. you got to sign like, you know, 10 papers right. and contract. And even our wedding, I mean, we didn't have a contract for our wedding. Mm. We didn't have any of those provisions that a lot of people spend so much time over. There's just this sense of, I said I was going to do it. It's yeah. my honor. I'm right. going to do it. True. And that, that stood out to me as something very... Um, like people's honor, people's word yeah. is really important, and that that amazed me really. And I, I just found that people deep down, everyone I met was so um, authentic, and mm. it was really it was really kind. And I think a lot of it, in my opinion, is because it's an island, and because people have had this this safety, this protection, yeah, yeah. and. It's interesting being here now six years and seeing like the onion, the layers of that, and you know how that can also be a little bit of a. Um, uh, on the other side of that is that mm. that safety that that being held can also lead to a little bit of complacence mm. and I definitely felt like I missed uh, you know like the American like yes we can like yeah, all yeah. right let's go let's go let's go yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and I found that especially trying to do our project you know people would say yeah I'll get that to you next week or mm. I'll get it to you and it would just it was like you know ta and oui. it was like ta <laughs> might be tomorrow might be next month might be never and I was like literally pulling my hair out like I can't this is I, I can't handle it yeah. and I I definitely would have burned bridges and I think a lot of people here yeah. do a lot of foreigners do because they don't realize and Joao was like this is not how you do things here you yeah. can't do that you can't yell at people yeah. and trust me it's gonna because then what happens is, and I've seen it happen is people don't want to work with you and if they don't want to mm. work with you people here are like well, I'm not gonna work with you they mm. it's not in the US where it's like right. no I have money you're gonna work for me because I'm paying you right, people right. here are just like no nope, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna yeah. work with you so thank God I didn't yell at people I almost oh man and Jamal <laughs> and I had some uh, some very heated discussions during those times it was a difficult time right. because I was really adapting to this new culture mm. and it was that was the downside but mm. it's um but the food oh my god the food, the food here yeah. is just the freshness of the ingredients mm, and the 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 flavors, and it's funny because I went back to the U.S. while I was, you know, just visiting. Uh, I was here for three months or something. I had to go back for work. I was working part time uh, at the time, and I noticed immediately the food, the flavors in the U.S. to me were muted. It was yeah. very muted, and yeah. to me, it was a sign of, you know, well, this isn't fresh from the ground or fresh from the sea. It's mm. been transported or it's been right, genetically right. modified or whatever, yeah, yeah. and. Yeah, the food and what we do with food, what Juan does with food, that's a huge part of what we do here. Nice. And um, it's just, it's so, um, it's so special to be able to highlight the, the, the ingredient to people in, in creative ways and to connect people to place. Because yeah. I really think that food is, connects people to place. Yeah. It has the energy of the place. And you're growing food here, obviously. I mean, we walk through the gardens and everything. The place is huge, but... So you're growing your own food here as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we grow. We have um, an organic farm. It's it's a fruit orchard. Um, mm -hmm. It dates back to the 1800s when, you know, here the Azores would grow oranges for, mm. for the UK mostly. Yeah. Um, so we have these old fruit trees, which we had to bring back to life, of course, because mm. they had been abandoned as well, and fruit yeah. trees need a lot of love. Mm. And then we started growing, um, you know, favas, kale, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, pd pd, mm. um, eggplant, onions, garlic, all the herbs you can imagine. Wow. Um, we have, uh, what else? Oh, of course, squash and, mm. and pumpkin and, and mm. depending on the season. Right, and, true. Uh, you know, I'm a Boston, New York girl. I'm a yeah. city girl. Yeah, I'd yeah. never, I'd never had, um, I didn't know like that garlic grew underground. I mean, I had the most basic understanding of yeah. food. Yeah. And now, um, you know, to own a place like this and to and to connect to the, mm. the land, I think it's what more people need. Mm. Uh, I know not everyone can have a land, but, mm. you know, when you can, I think getting people to put their hands in the dirt and to mm. walk barefoot is, right. what, is what we all need as humans now. Well, you bring up a good point, though, and I know there's some people who are considering, like, relocating here and they're coming from a city. Mm -hmm. So let's compare cities. So what do you like about you know, Ponta da Gada compared to other cities? Ah, well, I find Ponta da Gada, just in general, that it's, everything's very safe. You know, mm. I think that's um, just 
kind of a random story is when we used to hear the fireworks go off at all times of the day, which are usually used here for signaling the times they're moving the saints from yeah. the churches. And yeah. so it can be at two in the morning. It can be at one o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And, and at first, my first thought was like, oh my God, is that a gunshot? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, and I remember that was my first thought. And now I've lived here long enough where yeah. um, it, it's just the safety. And it, like, like, for example, I was out in Ponte Delgado with some girlfriends and you know, I don't know how it happened, but I must have some, some, my keys came out of my purse. I must have been reaching mm. into my purse or something when the keys fell out. Mm. And so that night I couldn't get into my car to mm. come home. And mm. so I took a cab mm. and the guy, you know, I told him, you know, he was like, Oh, what's going on? And plus I didn't have keys to get into the house. Oh, I had right. to actually, he, so, so listen to the, the cab driver <laughs> pulled up in front of our house and he helped me get on his roof Oh my goodness! and then climb oh, over the thanks. fence. And he didn't want to accept payment. Oh my goodness. He didn't want to accept payment. I was like, no, 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 I can at least pay you. Come on, please. Like, yeah. this is so kind, but he was so generous and he wanted to get, and the very next day, the police called and said they had the, or we called the police, sorry, oh, okay. Joao had the idea to say, let's call the police and mm. see if anybody found it. And I'm like, who would return a key to the police station? Who does yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. We called the Ponte Delgado police, they had the key. Wow. And it was one of those automatic ones that's yeah. hard to get. And wow. so, um, I just don't, wow. in, in Boston and New York, that doesn't happen. Not for me. No, that's never no, happened. no, 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 no. Um, yeah. And another example is the... The cops one day, Joao had left, or we were with Joao's friend, and uh, we got back to his car, and there was a note on the car that said, you left your keys in the ignition and the window down. We closed the window, we locked the car, call me, I have your keys. It was a police officer oh who was goodness. checking for the parking. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. And so he, uh, I was like, that's amazing. Yeah, who like, that's that? <laughs> amazing. So Ponte Delgada, that's to me wonderful. And then I guess there's, like, on the nightlife side, I mean, look, I'm not at that stage of my life where I'm looking to be out till, uh, you know, yeah. although I will say people here go out. They that's true. They start yeah. at two in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I just can't keep up. Yeah, know? that's so true. They start at two and they're done by nine. <sighs> it's like, wait a second, what is yeah. going on? <laughs> I did that. I did that once. I was up till, till 6 a.m. Yeah, I yeah, was yeah. really proud of myself, yeah. but. But I, I, yeah, so I, I, it's definitely quiet, you know, if you go yeah. out and it's, if you're looking for that, like, you know. That's like, what I like about it. I like the quietness of the city. Like, so I, I grew up a lot, around a lot of cities um, and, and I just like how it's, it's not so busy or congested. You, you know, you're in a city, you feel it, but it's not congested. Yeah. That's what I really like about it. Yeah. So. And I like that it's easy. Like I like that you can That's you can drive true. in yeah. and you can park. You can pay for parking, and it's not like fifty dollars an hour, which yeah. is what it was in Boston, you <laughs> yeah. know. And yeah. and you can park on the street, and it's just easy. Like and for us, you know, we're we're a world away from the city, but mm. we're only ten minutes, fifteen minutes drive. Right, and so right. that is that is really nice because yeah. it's great. You know, I feel like I still have. I thought I was moving to the middle of nowhere, but sure. little yeah. did I know that I would have this robust community of amazing people yeah. and friends and, and, yeah. and other people that I could learn from and grow with. Yeah. Well, most people don't even know where the Azores is when they hear about it or they're, you know, they're like considering, or they heard yeah. about it from a friend or they're considering moving here. So um, in, in closing of this episode, what would you tell someone who's thinking about either relocating to a new place like what would you tell someone who's like oh yeah come to the azores rather than bali or something like that or i don't know somewhere mm, else that's a good question mm. i guess i guess being clear on your why i think with any decision like that mm. um you know knowing really knowing the place and realizing that sometimes we can idolize something we might come at a certain time of year like in the summer and mm. then expect oh i'm coming to this tropical place and mm. i want to go somewhere warm all year round yeah, yeah. and as you know and as yeah. we know we do have a winter here and it can be sure. tough yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think it keeps away the wrong kind of uh, traveler. Mm. Um, but I think being clear in your intentions, you know, what's drawing mm. you here? What are you looking to gain? What, mm. uh, you know, how, how does a place support you to expand and, and really live your purpose? I mm. think that's the biggest question. Mm. And, um, you know, we spent a lot of time looking at that because we had all that time while we were looking for a property, but, but how does the place support and how does, um, and even when you decide, within the Azores and how do you decide which island and how do you decide which part of the island and I think just knowing before you start looking at things knowing why knowing why what are your how does the place support you um, yeah. what are you looking for that's a good point so in closing uh, I know there's people who are saying like there's a lot of like what do you do for work and how do you make money there and um, so let's talk about that about the the property that you have here and also your, I don't want to call it remote business, but your, your work, your yeah, local yeah. work and your online work. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So our main business up until the pandemic was this, we mm -hmm. have, um, 
what we call an experienced travel lodge where we work to elevate consciousness. This is our vision and mission. Mm. Uh, well, it's our vision, our mission, the way we do it, the how we do it is through experiences in retreats, mm. uh, group travel. We have capacity for up to 12 people mm. over five suites. Uh, and we, we help guests engage in discovery. So discovering the island through hikes, discovering through really connecting through the food and also through introspection. So mm. I'm also a yoga teacher okay. and trained in mindfulness and a bunch of different modalities of energy healing. So we bring that into the travel experience. And okay. so um, then the pandemic started in, you know, last year and, yeah. uh, you know, we were just like, a big principle for us was having full-time employment and we didn't want to you know these people depended on these this job for their families and um, at a certain point government funds run out and so we we're like how do we keep this going how mm. do we how do we stay committed to our team you know yeah, who, yeah. without them we couldn't run this business right. and um, so that's when so much of my old world which was management consulting you know in the real estate space looking at how I was reaching out to them for, hey, I'm doing this mindfulness work now. And I got a few um, like lucky uh, leads, I think, that gave me the credibility to reach out. And one was the University of Toronto. I was able mm. to teach a course there, which mm. gave me that kind of resume to then approach the companies and say, hey, I'm, I'm teaching this. I've taught at the University of Toronto mm. for a master's program. Mm. Can we bring this type of teaching to help teams be more engaged mm. with everyone working remotely and with everyone right. just really having a hard time? Um, how do you get people to care about what they do? Right, and right. How do you redefine leadership in a mm. way that, you know, in this day and age, it's like if you're still making decisions that are selfish and that are mm. only for you, then mm. it's like, how did you not wake up in this time? Mm. And so... So I, I want to help people with that awakening. I want to help teach that to companies and tying that old world of business and corporate pressure to perform with how do we actually connect? You know, mm. what, what is what does it mean to have purpose? You know, mm. we all have one. Do we know it? Yeah. How do we know we're on our path? Mm. How do we how do we use our time in yeah. this in this life? You right. know, And so. Um, so that's resulted in a couple of things, uh, a couple of corporate clients, a couple of courses. Mm. And what's actually been amazing is that this is exactly what I want to be doing. Right. And so now I get to take that world with having this space at, at Quinta Minu Vida. And mm. those online clients will hopefully come on an in-person retreat to then embody some of the practices that we've been doing online for the last you know, yeah. year or so. It's, um, a great, it's a great marriage. Not only your real marriage, but also the great marriage of what you teach and what you do into the experiences and the lodging. That's really unique. Thank you. Like yeah, that. yeah, and it's always evolving. We we just revamped our website. Mm. Um, we uh, we're we're really. It's funny when you start with something and you're kind of testing the waters. Mm. And we said yes to a lot of things in the beginning, and we were kind of open to anything, sort of sort of thing. Like guests would contact us and say, "Do you do this? Yes. Do you do this? Yes." Now we're much more specific, and now we're much more confident in what we're doing because we know that it's it's our unique offering, yeah. and by honoring that, we get to do what we love, mm. and we get to make a real difference and have the people that want to be here really engage. Yeah, that's really cool. That's good stuff. So where I'm going to put, uh, you said you had a revamped website. I'm going to put the website and the links in the description. I'm going to put the, the link to this uh, to this place so you can come out and stay here and come swim in the nice big pool <laughs> and check out these beautiful gardens as well. Uh, all right. Any final words to someone out there who's thinking of even maybe just coming to visit? What would you tell them? What would you tell them? Well, this is a really special place. So if you're feeling the call... Definitely follow that gut feeling and just see where it leads you. Yes. Good stuff. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode. See ya.